two years since M.A.M. Now here I go again To confine innocent men in a ten by ten Fate Oh, now the men deserve Hello, everybody. Silence in men to walk You don't say nothing cause you know your cops But someone knows something Yet everyone plays ball I say we round them all up Let's brain fingerprint them all Everything about the case was suspicious I hope the Biden teeth of justice is so vicious For those who bred the lie They temporarily preserve Hi, hey Joy. From time into time to Brendan's so-called confession To the fact that Peterson was out of town when she went missing How can we forget Andy hey, Sam, Sam William, William Henry, Henry Call. Call. Andy's son, Sam William I Henry Call. Hello, Stacy Seabrook, man. Let's brain fingerprint them all. So much planted evidence now anyone can see. Hello, Ray. The magic bullet and blood in the RAV. And even evidence that defies gravity. The key that turned up seven searches later. With Hello, Christina Tilly. Glad you can make it. Let's brain fingerprint them all. All right. How are we doing? So, today we're going to talk about a couple things, but wanted to start out. Hello, hello, Sharon Sunshine. Want to start out by saying once again, and I've covered this in the last couple videos, but I want to go ahead and cover it one more time. And that is that the family. Steven's family um, over at the Salvage Yard, they are not running any GoFundMes. If you see a GoFundMe for the family, you should report it to somebody so that the, those scammers can get found out. And if you do want to support the family, the link is now in the info below this video for sure. It's been checked and double checked. It's there. And you can go to that link. And they have an assortment of different kinds of clothing, sweaters, t-shirts, tank tops, um, and, and all including the brand new um, we all live on Avery Road t-shirt and bumper stickers which you can get and if you want to buy that stuff that that way you know you're buying something that that you get to that helps you show your support and they get you know a little bit of money from the profits of of what gets sold there so that's the proper way to support the family that's the way that they're you know asking people to support the family and any GoFundMe's are a scam report those immediately uh, so just want to make that absolutely clear. Hello, pa hello, Parky. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, Gaynor. Hello, Karen. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hi, Tom Hughes. Finally catching the live chat. Glad you can make it. Absolutely ecstatic. Hi, Rachel. Case is never off your mind. Yeah, that's kind of the way I was after I watched MAM one. I just couldn't deal with it. Just what what Brendan just got to me. And I ended up getting into the case mainly because of Brendan, but in turn, in in researching for Brendan, I ended up coming to the conclusion that Stephen had, had gotten railroaded, that it was pretty evident. Also, I've watched it three times. <laughs> I, I think I've watched MAM2 three times at this point as well. Hello, Cheryl from Scotland. Love it. Got Scotland up here, right there. <laughs> Hello, Maggie. <laughs> oh, definitely, Tara. It is. It's, you know, it's particularly Brendan. I mean, he was just a kid. He was just a kid, man, when this all happened to him. And he was clearly guessing. And he even actually tells the investigators at one point that that's what he was doing. They just ignore it and move on. Uh, to fact feeding and, and getting him to say what they want but yeah hello red eyes happy to see you live again just finished all your videos you just finished all my videos all over 300 of them wow 
That's diligent. <laughs> Finally know who killed Nicole Simpson. And thank you for that. <laughs> well, you know. I, you know, as a youngster, as a, as a, ju you know, kind of as a, as kind of a juvenile myself when the whole OJ thing was going down, I, you know, I saw OJ as kind of a, a hero, uh, you know, sports figure, very, you know, talented running back and, and he, he, he was on like movies. He played, uh, was it Nordberg in, in the Naked Gun movies where he would always end up like. Uh, what's it called? Leslie uh, Leslie Nielsen, the main actor in the movies, would always end up like doing something that would end up getting him hurt. And so by the end of the movie, you'd see O.J. all in a wheelchair and with splints and various braces all over the place, you know. And then and then he'd usually be in a wheelchair or something, and and Le Leslie Nielsen's character would end up like patting him on the back, and he end up rolling down a hill and and something happening to him. Anyway, he was just kind of a character you just kind of loved. It was hard to believe. And then there was all that stuff with the LAPD that, that, that was coming out at that time uh, with the high levels of racism and the things that were going on that, that helped, you know, OJ's defense team. But, yeah, when you look at it ultimately, when you look at it now, you can go, yeah, look, it's pretty clear what happened here. Um, but unlike what happened here in the Avery case where everything's just, like, missing and not there and, and you're just supposed to fill in the gaps with your imagination, I guess, but, you know. Hello, Rommel. You think you keep alive the public domain? Absolutely. It's, I yeah, want to give everybody a place to chat, create the communities for pay, people to chat about this and and all that. <laughs> Two or three times, yep. Cheryl Ashley for Sunny Scotland. Hello. Hi, Gloria. Hi from England. Uh, watching your call with Call Capaldi when I noticed you were live. <laughs> I'm going to be doing, by the way, folks, I'm going to be doing a call with Mark Hodnot from Australia and Paul Capaldi from the Mad Scotsman from uh, Scotland tonight. Except I'm just going to be uploading that. And the reason why I'm going to do that is, is I'm going to talk about with them some things. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in some clips for you guys. And when I do, when I do an upload... I'm really good with my editing software to where I can get the clips in that I want to get in. So, but I did want to say this. We're going to upload the one tonight so I can throw in some clips and maybe some documents and some things that some of you might not know if you're if you're just tuning back in and watching MAM2 and don't know all the things that we've discovered in the last two and a half years in between MAM1 and 2. Uh, I tend to throw in some things there that, that maybe not everybody knows about, so... Uh, gonna be doing a chat with those two tonight, uh, and then and and gonna be doing it doing it in my older style of uploading it, so that I can put in some like I said documents and some things that some of you might not know about. So that look forward to that if you're interested. Um, so happy KZ found cotton. On the, yeah, absolutely. Cotton cotton uh, fibers on the bullet or not, it shouldn't be there really. Um, how do you think the tires are at for example for soil analysis? Uh, good question. There was a question at the end of yesterday's at the end of yesterday our BD's appeals over. His his federal appeals are over. Yes. His team is now regrouping and, and they're gonna file they're gonna come up with a new um, petition for post conviction relief based on some other aspect of the case where they feel that there was injustice and, and there's all kinds of places in this case all over the place where there was injustice so they're going to be figuring out what their next road is and most likely sometime in the next few months something may come up in Zellner's investigations that can help Brendan so that may get passed along and because if it does come up it will get passed along to Brendan's lawyers Kathleen Zellner has has not been shy about that she said anything and any anything and everything that she finds that can help Brendan will be immediately turned over to his lawyers. So no worries there, folks. Kathleen Zellner is she she wants she she cares about Brendan too. She wants Brendan out. So if they find anything that would help Brendan, it will be handed over. So there's the hope that that will happen. But look, Brendan's got the best lawyers. Stephen Drizzen has gotten so many uh, wrongfully convicted youth. 
exonerated. It's it's what he spent a lifetime doing. He's he's good at it. He's he's busy in the work of not only doing that but also cultivating the next generation of wrongful conviction attorneys, particularly for the wrongful convictions of youth. He is a he is a big cog in the wheel um, when it comes to righting the wrongful convictions of juveniles and those, especially those of mentally limited juveniles. And so Stephen Drizzen's a name to watch because, like I said, he is cultivating a large part of the next generation of of wrongful conviction attorneys for for juveniles. It'd be awesome to have a video that explains Zipper and all that because MEM2 didn't really say much. Okay, uh, Christina Talley, I remind me at the end of the video, there is a brilliant video that talks about the timelines of 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 Teresa and and how her how her day probably went that day. There's a really good one. It came out really it was really soon after MAM1 too, but somebody got into the documents and did a really great job of researching uh, what, what numbers she was calling and where and was able to find out what way she was going and stuff and found, and figured out I'll, I'll, like I said remind me at the end of the video to just you know that and then and then I will add it into the info um, I'll, you'll probably have to wait probably about an hour for the video to process but as soon as the video is done processing I can go ahead and add the link into the to the info box below the video I will also add the link to uh, Ricky Hochstetler's Facebook group for those of you who will be interested, we are going to be talking about Ricky Hochstetler today, so I didn't, want, I don't want to forget about that. But I will also be adding that link in the info box uh, below in about an hour or so after the video is, not an hour or so from now, but in about an hour after the video is done, the video will take about an hour to process, and then I'll be able to add those things into the info. But what is in the info right now are the ways that you can write to Stephen or Brendan if you wish. Those, those are there. As I said, the link to buy the clothing, the, the family, any, you know, articles of the family's clothing line or bumper stickers, uh, that link is there. Um, there's, so there's those things there already, but like I said, I'll add those couple others after the video. Obviously, there's only so much MEM could show on TV. Yeah, you know, there's so much they can you know cover and you know it, it, it's in and, and sometimes they may think maybe there's not enough like corroborating evidence around a certain thing for them to want to show it you know because they're they're very conscious especially conscious especially after MAM1 I'm sure with with part two they were very conscious about remaining credible so that people couldn't claim that they were making sensational claims. So I'm sure there was a lot of like, you know, just thought about is, you know, is what we're putting in solid? Is it, is it backed up by, you know, evidence and whatnot kind of thing? So do you think they still even have the RAV? Yeah, I believe they do. I hear it's buried underground somewhere or, or parked in an underground structure somewhere some kind of evidence um, storage place I guess or something it's only like it's access to the car uh, and light poo will hit the fan when she, yeah exactly they, they're, it's, it's pretty clear they're desperate to keep her away from all that stuff right now does anyone know why Barb and Brian Dassey won't do the right thing and come forward and tell KZ what Bobby said uh, Brian Dassey has Brian Dassey, uh, from what I understand, has, or well, at least when when John Dietering came to talk to Brian Dassey, when they reopened the investigation into the Hallbach case, because those of you who don't know, Calumet last year in September reopened the Hallbach investigation. During that that investigation, there's about 60 pages of it. During that investigation, one of the people they talked to was Brian, and Brian said all of these things point blank straight to John Dietering's face and and uh, when he got challenged by John Dietering a little bit he stood his ground I was proud of him I was I was really proud of Brian he really because he was he was afraid to let the the officers into his house he doesn't like what he's seen go down with his family in his lifetime and he was a he, he was actually fearful to allow investigator Dietering in his house to interview him but he, he got over that fear so I admired that 
And then not only that, but when he was when he was there talking to John Dietering and and Dietering started kind of challenging him or questioning him and what he was saying, he stood his ground and I, you know, he really impressed me. I thought it was great. So I I have no I have no bad stuff about Brian Dassey. I know if Zellner wants him to testify at trial, he will. I'm I, I feel confident of that. So many suspects, and someone has to snitch for them to get to the, 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 out of the Alfred plea. There will never be an Alfred plea with Zellner. That just that won't happen. She doesn't do Alfred pleas. I know a lot of people keep bringing the Alfred pleas up, but that was fine for Michael Peterson because you know David Rudolph was just not he was not into fighting the case without without there being money from it and stuff. So he was they were really just trying to allow Michael to go back to a, you know somewhat of a normal life for the, his remaining years so that was a little bit different of a situation um, Zellner's a completely different attorney she took on this case ready to go right after those responsible ready to get in there and she is not backing down and she's not going to be she's not going to be meeting halfway with an Alfred plea it's just not what she does because an Alfred plea would prevent her from making the civil litigation, which allows her to get her money back. You understand? She's put forward now, I believe it's uh, over a million, I think. If I remember correctly, it's it's over a million. It may be less, but, but it's a lot of money, no matter what it is. Because paying for the brain fingerprinting and every single one of the best experts in the world and, you know, just... And all the different testing that they've done, and and DNA testing alone is very expensive, you know, and all the investigators she pays, and and that, that go out and beat the street, and and all those things, all that stuff costs money, all of it, it all costs money, and that's all coming out of her own pocket at this point in time. So she has to recoup that. She has to, and that's why she won't take an Alfred plea, because eventually when she gets her clients exonerated. She goes on the civil suits, and that's where she gets number one. Her clients recompensate or compensated, and then she gets herself reimbursed for all those costs and everything that that you know she took on while defending her client. Does anybody know why Barb da Barb Ryan Dassey would? Uh, yeah, right. I already answered that one. Sorry. Uh, yes, I'm sure. That, Yes, but I am sure she is being paid well by Netflix and the filmmakers. Uh, you know, that may be true. That may be true that she's getting something from that. Certainly. And look at and look at how powerful her testing has made MAM2. Look at how powerful all that... Excuse me. Look at how powerful Power MAM2 is due to all the testing that Zellner has footed the bill for. R.H. tripping all over his words and Mike looking at him. That vid, yeah, that one's great. Uh, yeah. Yes, I and I mentioned that one, I think, yesterday when I was talking. Yeah, that one is so trippy, watching Mike, like, leaning forward, like, almost staring daggers at Ryan when he's answering that question, and it's just like, yeah, bizarre. I think Bobby was stalking her. I don't know if he was or not. Can't say. Did they check the, the ECU... Um, I remember somebody asking that before, and I don't think it ever was. Uh, it's a guilty plea without an... I know, yeah, I know what an Alfred plea is. Um, Zellner is the best at her job. She will get Avery out. Uh, yeah, see, that's what it is. She's going to just... I mean, right now, what, she's, what her evidence is showing... And and, and and those who are and those who are committed to keeping Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey behind bars are claiming it's all circumstantial. But for me, it's far from circumstantial that that we never I was never satisfied with the prosecution's explanation in the first place because to to suggest that Stephen Avery cleaned up the trailer or the garage, either one, is ridiculous and a farce. So that was already a problem. But they got their conviction on that. But now she's basically showing that, you know, with all where the dogs were all hitting, uh, judging by where her car must have been to be able to hit the cell towers it hit 
after she left Avery Salvage. Uh, the accounts, you know, of of Brian Dassey saying that Bobby said she left, and you know, as as the, as the evidence begins to mount to support her narrative, which never happened with the state's narrative, right? So it's it, you know it'll 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 this will happen, with more and more of us paying attention this will happen, which is another reason why I'm here. This is what we can all do. For the boys is number one sending them letters and and if you want supporting the family by buying the clothing but, but by also paying attention, and seeing what's going on and and, and talking about it with your friends and and everything when they watch MAM too, and 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 making people aware of the issues. Um, make sure you're bringing up things like AEDPA and what it is and why it's important and amending it is important. Uh, make sure you're, th- you know, just make sure that when you're talking about it, you know what you're talking about and, 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 and so that, so that other people can be made aware of the facts of the case and just that the populace can become informed and properly informed, not like you see Ken Kratz doing with you know his things that he feel MAM left out which you find out 80% of those are absolutely false the other 20% are marginally true and yeah so it's like you know anyway can you help me with promoting the GoFundMe for the Avery's no there's no GoFundMe's for the Avery's if I was to help you do that I would it would I may as well just hang up my support right now and and be done because being part of a GoFundMe, it would be a scam, as I explained at the beginning of this video. <laughs> if you want to support the family, then you buy you buy the clothing line. You buy their line of clothing. That's the best way to support the family. Okay, I've been saying this now for f- three or four days, so I'm going to say it again and again. If you donated money to that GoFundMe, try to get it back. And, re- and then try to report that GoFundMe. Guys, they are not doing any GoFundMes. They are not. They have they have been posting about this. I don't know how else to say it. They've been posting. I've been talking about this for three or four days now. They are not doing any GoFundMes. None. If you see a GoFundMe, you need to tell me. You need to tell somebody. My, my friend Paul, my friend Mark Hodnot. You need to tell one of us. Carla Chase. You need to tell somebody. If you see a GoFundMe for the family, it's fake. It's fake. I don't know. I want to make that absolutely clear. Absolutely clear, people. Please listen to me. Any GoFundMes that you see for the family are fake. I'm so sorry, Crazy Life. I'm yeah. I just want to now. I just want to make sure I repeat it a hundred times in the video so that other people don't end up, you know, falling into the trap. I mean, the family is absolutely not doing any GoFundMe's. They're absolutely not doing them. They've made it very clear. They've done multiple posts about it that there is no GoFundMe's, and that if you want to support the family, the way to do it is to buy the clothing line that they have available. And I've left the link to that website in the information down below this video and that that way that way you get you get something from from them something that you get to help show your support and then they make a little bit of profit off of everything that that people buy and then they they get a little extra money to help them run the yard and keep the business you know flowing and and that sort of stuff so that's the way to do it and then that and that way everybody gets something out of it and it's and it's that's the best way for it to be but like i've said multiple posts from the family can't say this enough time multiple posts from from the family they are not doing any any gofundmes and if you want to support the family then you you want to buy from the clothing line Zellner's suspects right now are Ryan Hillegas, Bobby Dassey, and Scott Taddick. And Zellner hasn't said Michael Osmondson, but I still kind of have a little bit of an issue with Michael Osmondson. Congrats being the prize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have hoodies and bumps, bumper stickers, and, and they have, yeah, like, and they have, like, cut off. Uh, t- like tees where it's like a tank top almost they have various things and 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 the brand new item is the we all live on Avery Road t-shirt so that's that's kind of the new cool item <coughs> 
Michael Osmondson is a friend of Bobby Dassey. I, exp I did some explaining about who he was in yesterday's video. Um, if you wanted to go back and watch that. Pressure Barb. Yeah. There certainly was all, all kinds of pressure on the Dassey family. On Barb and on probably Bobby and the boys. Yeah. To answer if any and Pace people, Beauty made it clear that Moira and Laura didn't didn't and don't pay anyone in the documentary except people that are in production or post-production. They are not paid to in the film. Right. Okay. So that's that that could very well be. And I know I know Kathleen Zellner is not hurting not, she's not like hurting, like she's not she's not sitting there with her hand out either. She'll just keep doing what she's doing and get Avery exonerated and then go in the civil cases and get her own back. And she's perfectly she's perfectly content to do it that way. So, you know, I, I'm sure she, she wasn't sitting there with her hand out to the filmmakers. And then Paul Capaldi. Also, all the proceeds from the Control Question t-shirts go to Brendan Dassey. Absolutely. Yes, they do. Um, if the line on the RAV4 was broken before Ryan states, he would have mentioned it. In the, exactly. And he, yeah. Well, and plus the fact that his claim that it was claimed on the insurance and re Teresa le received a lump sum but just didn't repair it has turned out to be completely false. Because if there was, a, if there was any proof of, a, of an insurance claim, I guarantee you Calumet County, when they reopened the Teresa Halbach investigation, would not have been going to Mike Halbach, the victim of the brother, and asking him to go digging through all the pictures on all of his old computers, praying and hoping for a picture of the RAV4 with that light damaged on it. If they, if they had proof, they would not be asking the victim's brother to do that. That's just logic. Um, uh, it's Osmundson, I believe. Mund, M-U-N-D. Who's Ricky Hochstetler? Okay, so Ricky Hochstetler. The thing that was the, the next thing we're here to talk about today is Ricky Hochstetler. Who is Ricky Hochstetler? Okay, around the same time, well, actually after the whole Avery thing. Ricky Hochstetler was a uh, he was he was seventeen year old kid. He was one night walking home from a friend's house. It was like a pizza party. Um, they were there watching movies and and you know eat, eating pizza and drinking soda and and that sort of thing and whatever. And he was there pretty late, and he was walking home. And it was it was I believe it was it was during a cold time of year that it was it was either snowing or slushy and it was just kind of rough conditions and. As he was about 25 feet from his home, he was he had walked almost all the completely almost completely the entire way home, and he was about 25 feet from his driveway when somebody on the road had veered or you know something dozed off, uh, were drunk and had swerved something and hit him and 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 killed Ricky uh, right in front of his house essentially. Like I said, about 25 feet from his driveway. The thing about this case um, that's that's disturbing is is that number one, it's suspected that that Robert Herman, the current head sheriff of Manitowoc County, it's he's been in, he's been investigated twice by DCI because they believe he might have been involved, and there's a lot of people locally that also believe that he might have been involved. In fact, there's people that make the claim, and I don't know the area well enough to understand, but maybe some of those people will show up here on in the comment section, because I was I was part of the Q and A in in Ricky's group earlier today. Ricky's mom showed up in the group, and she was there answering questions about about Ricky's case for everybody. So I was in there today, and there was somebody saying that Robert Herman was at a nearby Christmas party, and and whatever type of thing. And where everybody was drinking and all that sort of stuff. So there's there's this suspicion around Robert Herman. Then there's the fact that when Ricky's mother was trying to find out how you know what 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 the investigation had turned up about this, she found out that it was really limited what the investigation had turned up. So she ended up calling DCI, Sergeant Link, 
uh, well, whatever, Detective Link, told her that he had called DCI and DCI said that there was nothing they could do. So she ends up calling DCI at one point, a couple years after Ricky's death. She ends up calling DCI. And she explains her, her, you know, her, what she had talked about with James Link and that James Link said that there was nothing they could do. And DCI said, oh, there's absolutely things we could do. We have new, we have brand new equipment. You know, we've had brand new equipment for the last couple of years that allows us to go and take, you know, measurements of the crime scene and, 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 and things like that and make calculations and, and predictions and that sort of stuff. And, uh. And the fact is, is that the first communication we've had about this case is from you right now. So literally, she was the first one to contact DCI in regards to Ricky's case. So then she calls back Link and says, well, I just found out that, you know, nobody's called regarding Ricky's case. And then suddenly Link starts pushing through some, some, some requests for, the, for DCI to go out there. And, but it was already two years later. Had they gotten had they gotten them out there when it fresh happened and and DCI could have been measuring from where the debris was to from where Ricky was and from you know and DCI could have been do, taking the measurements with their equipment that they were their new equipment that they were talking about so there's a pl- a lot of stuff about Ricky's case that's really bad but it's worse when you find out it has the same villains from Stephen and Brendan's case like Link and Colburn because Link and Colburn were basically in charge of, you know, of Ricky's case. Link was in charge of it, but then when he retired, then Colburn became in charge of it. Right? And like I said, the lie that the lie that Link told Ricky's mother is is unconscionable. You know, and it just shows the intent that these guys have there. And how can I believe that Link and Colburn are honest? I can't. Hyman Shingir Shing Shing here. <laughs> I see I have a Scottish flag, I do. That that was sent by me by by my friend the Mad Scotsman, Mr. Capaldi. He's somewhere on this thread too. He's not there with anyone. Okay. Anybody here asking about Ricky? Let's see. We do have a pamster on the channel. How many more things have these guys messed up? Absolutely, Rebecca. I mean. It's it, w- when you find out it's not just the Avery case, but then you move over into this case and you find out that James Link is lying to a victim's mother. It's like, wh- what the hell? <laughs> and 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 Norm Gone wants me to believe that these are good, good, honest officers, and and it makes my blood boil that anybody would suggest anything about them. It's like, shut up, Norm Gone. You're an idiot. Hope the actual killer's conscience gets the best of him. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, so maybe Scott killed her and he helped Bobby. Possibly that's what, that's currently what Zellner's thinking or along those lines. My initial belief is series right here, guys. Okay. All right. So I don't want to get away from talking about Ricky. So the thing about Ricky is, you know, he was, he was pretty much, he was a pretty good kid. He, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate what happened. And it was most likely somebody who was drinking and panicked. And and didn't care that they had taken somebody else's life. They just didn't want, they just didn't want any, you know, consequences in their own life, and couldn't even be bothered to stop, so that the family could actually know what happened to Ricky. And and it's sad and it's ridiculous. And then what what Link does on top of that, and if it was actually Robert Herman, I mean, the the dirty corruptness going on in Manitowoc if that is actually the case is just phenomenal absolutely flipping phenomenal yeah they tell you that but look at the way do you think the judges act that do you think the judges act that way about officer statements Maybe they tell a jury that, but the fact of the matter is, is look at the way judges act about prosecutor prosecutor statements and like law officer statements, and 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 how and how much how often those those entities get their motions and their and and everything that they're they're doing gets right in no problem, and 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 how much the defense you know tends to have trouble getting things in because 
you know, judges and, and stuff are are not friendly, you know. So, I mean, maybe they tell juries that, but it's not the way that the courts really feel, in my opinion, in a lot of times. There was rumor, There is rumors that, yes, he was investigated twice by DCI. DCI twice investigated Robert Herman. They couldn't get enough to, to bring any charges, so it got left with, you know, nothing happened, basically. But, yes, he was twice investigated by DCI. Brush show gasoline oil on the deer carcasses. Not being fully okay. Of course, there was that's bias. Everyone's okay. Empties and fall out. Corner. Body. So, I don't know. I thought it would be interesting for everybody here to know. And it seems like everybody's kind of interested in, in the things that they're interested in right now. And that's great. I, 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 you know, whatever it is, whatever aspect of the case right now is, is, is making your mind burn and, and making you think about things is great. But, uh, basically I wanted to just say, I wanted to bring up Ricky Hochstetler for, for people that don't know about him. I know a lot of people probably just watched MAM2 and, you know, probably haven't really researched much in the last two and a half years they you know you, you remember watching MAM1 now you've watched MAM2 now you've kind of gotten a bunch of information thrown at you that's got you going holy crap wow and you don't even know about some of this other stuff that popped up in the last two and a half years like Ricky Hochstetler um, and and how it implicates James Link as being the dirty dog that he is so I wanted to go ahead and give people a chance to be aware of that and um, you know, so I think I've I think I've explained exp uh, gone through Ricky enough here. I do have two videos. If you guys are interested, you can find if you type in Ricky Hochstetler in the search. It's H O C H S T E T L E R. Anyway, so Hochstetler, you type it in, the two videos should pop up. Uh, I've done about him. So um, now we'll go ahead and go ahead and we'll do the rest of the the video here, kind of trying to address your comments. Uh, as, if, as if there's actually a person or two out there who who did this and they know and they know every detail and every move of everything saw everything killed someone and there's two guys in jail who know nothing <laughs> seems seems likely Bobby did it and ST helped cover it up that's like I said Zoner's current theory so can't can't you know can't they say that that's that's what she's currently saying happened I'm glad you brought up Ricky. It all it also shows how many issues there are with these cops. It does. It shows that it wasn't just in one case. Um, are there any TV shows about on Ricky? I believe I don't believe there is any TV shows on Ricky. You might be able to find there was something. Uh, I might even be able to find it, but you might be able to type in a search for something by DK Sale, um, where he pieced something. He pieced something together and did. He made a little video that kind of goes through a, the timeline of Ricky's case, which is very, very interesting. Um, so you might be able to type it into a search. David, Dave K. Sale, or David K. Sale, S-A-L-E. And uh, type that with Ricky Hochstetler, and you might get it to pop up. If not, I'll see if I can find... Well, I'll put the I'll put the link to Ricky's Facebook group, and I'm pretty sure there you'll be able to go in and ask, and the admins will be able to bring it up. Oh, thank you, Tara. Um, let's see who will crack first. These cops are willing to lie and cover shit up, yet supposedly wouldn't do that in a case like Stevens. Yeah, I know. Feel so bad for Debbie. She just needs to know the truth. I agree. And 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 you know, like I said, she got jerked around by James Link, and you know, he's just once again cast himself as the villain. Um, no wonder he's retired, long retired, and gotten the hell out of Dodge. I listened to Rebutting a Murder last night. Absolute hogwash. Yeah, I I started listening to that guy once, but I I can't I can't listen to people that bought Ken Kratz's BS hook line and sinker. I can't because I can prove it wrong. So people that bought it hook line and sinker and based their entire theories on 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 the lies of Ken Kratz, I just can't. I just can't. Kenny 
KZ is not accusing BD as a defense attorney. Uh, she is creating reasonable doubt. Right. She is saying he could have met that he could have met the high standard of Denny, and 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 therefore it would have been plausible that the defense could have pointed at him as a possible suspect, and therefore it could have created doubt in the jury's mind about Stephen Avery. And that's what it's about. It's about how this could have created doubt in the jury's mind, and that's why it's important. And 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 that's that's the measure of a Brady violation. That's how they measure whether or not a Brady violation is important. Um, it's it's so it's one of the measures of it. Article I read about Ricky was a search about Colburn and the family thinks there's foul play by Colburn. Yeah, they thought Colburn or they thought some cop, and then suddenly there was the stuff that started to come out about Herman. And then, like I said, DCI ended up looking into Herman twice. Uh, about it, but they ended up not getting enough to be able to bring charges, or they just didn't find enough to link him, and so nothing ever came of it. But yeah, DCI did look into him twice. Stephen went free from one pub, one pubic hair. Then the bullet evidence is more than sufficient now. <laughs> yeah, I know the bullet evidence is so ridiculous. Uh, if more than two or three people involved. They can't all keep their mouths shut much longer. Yeah, but I think it probably is literally two or three people, though. And they may be able to hold out for a while. I think they may have already retired and gotten the hell out of Dodge, personally. Except for Herman. Herman's trying to get out of Dodge. He's waiting for re He's waiting for the re-elections to happen right now because he's not running for re-election. So somebody else is going to get elected, and then he himself can get the hell out of Dodge. So... The only one who's not getting the hell out of Dodge right now, the only one who's a glutton for punishment right now, is Mark Wiegert. He just got elected head sheriff of Calumet County. So he he's the one that's acting like he's standing on solid ground, and I just personally can't wait to see it fall out from underneath him. Kratz is creepy as hell, absolutely. Also a liar and a snake. Yes, he is. What about testing the handcuffs that TH was supposedly... There, there's, uh, they were tested. There's no DNA. Not, not, none of Teresa's. They did find some of Jody and Steven's, though. Yeah, Jody's. At the trial, what was KK's theory as to when SA used the rap for? Okay, so he, they were saying that Steven and Brendan picked up her body, put it in the back of the rap for because they were going to, like, use the rap for to take her to the fire pit. I guess. I don't know. Because it doesn't make sense. But then they decided, no, never mind. That they were going to pull her out. And then they just they were just going to use the creeper. The thing that you use to roll underneath a car. They are just going to use the creeper to carry her out there. Kind of like a, you know, like a, um, like a thing for carrying prisoners or something, right? And, and carry her out there like that. Yet the creeper has no blood of Teresa's anywhere on any, any surface of it anywhere on it. It was taken apart, it was thoroughly checked, and there was absolutely zero sign of TH on that creeper. And and so that was the theory of all that, and it's absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't make any damn sense. Um, just like most of the prosecution's narrative. Hello from Cornwall, UK. Hi. Uh, easy grass, Cornwall. I personally think the courts are trying to figure out how to minimize collateral damage, meaning they will take as long as possible to release them. Yeah, well, they they probably are trying to figure out how to minimize the collateral damage from this. They probably are. But I think I think they're at the point where two and a half years of a black eye in the world in the world view. Now, I mean, it's not just the United States; it's the world. And you guys see that tonight when I go when I do my little video with me and Mark and uh, Paul Capaldi. Uh, you know, we got three different conf we didn't, we got three different continents covered in that call. Um, it's I got to imagine the state of Wisconsin and possibly, hopefully, these appeals judges, possibly the Supreme Court of Wisconsin, will be tired of the black eye that this whole thing is bringing, and they may decide to get proactive. It's to me, it's it's a possibility. Not saying it's gonna happen, but to me, it's a possibility, and 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 I'd like to see it. Uh, how is Jody DNA on the handcuffs if they were purchased? 
few weeks before. Oh, well, it was one set of that. One, maybe it was the leg irons, whatever it was that he had more than he had more than just the set that he bought. There was basically there was a lot of sets. Him and Jody were into having some kinky, uh, you know, restrained kind of, you know, sex, which is fine. Plenty, lots of people are. It's amazing how many people I know that own a pair of handcuffs. The Kev3 says, vibrator, why the hell is that necessary? That was because they were going to be taking, like, DNA samples off of it. They were, I don't know, it's creepy. They took, there's a there's a person on, on Twitter and on Reddit named Seven Pairs of Panties. So people always, when I say that name, they always kind of look at me funny. I go, it's because the investigators took seven pairs of Teresa's panties when they first went to her house. And then people look at me and go, like, it's, it's a different look. They're still looking at me in disbelief, but they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, so it's really, yes, bizarre things, really strange things of what they were doing in this case. How does a jury... Let's see. She dies. She has been shot and stabbed. I know. How does a jury sound and not corrupt mind? Well, they were being manipulated. I'll tell you that. There's there's definite indicators that the jury was being manipulated. Uh, people need to get over beyond vanilla sex. <laughs> Casey, <laughs> Casey cannot subpoena AC's records yet. Uh, seven pairs. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, seven pairs. Uh, Rocking Johnny. I had the same question as for Zellner's test. Stephen's blood would have been on multiple pieces of that debris. Um, yeah, certainly. Howdy, folks. Hi, uh, Kits loves YouTube, or Chris. Chris loves YouTube. Uh, so no records of AC and cement at Semex yet. No. Uh, I would like to know what exactly happened at Fox Hills. Maybe that's where the Dassey family were pressured. Absolutely, I think that's true. Absolutely, I think that's where Wiegert and Fassbender were sizing the Dassey boys up. And then where they figured out, they go, they were probably, after spending the weekend, went, him and Wiegert and, and Tom probably went, you know what, we could probably get Dassey to say what, almost anything we want. We, you think, Brendan? Yeah. We could probably get him to say whatever we want him to say. We can just feed him the. We can just feed him the storyline. I'll bet you that conversation took place. It's off the record, and I'm sure it's not. Re it's they'll never admit to it. But I'll bet you. I'll, I will bet you that that conversation took place. Oh, Ken says I wanted to lessen the gruesome facts for the family, yet shares the gruesome fact. Yeah, right. Exactly. Hypocrite. Absolutely. Absolutely. He lies like I mean, like breathing. Ken Kratz stole, stole panties, allegedly. <laughs> we should uh, send them a bunch of panties. <laughs> Hello from Scotland. Hey, DCG Steve. Uh, you will get an STD by Google searching Ken Kratz. <laughs> a computer virus? <laughs> exactly. Like they, like they gave a damn about their safety. Um, Hello, Lori. Oh. Let's see, Rachel Kennedy, Ken Crutch, yeah. Let's see, I read, I read a stop about a young girl from Wapun who disappeared in 2016. The resemblance to TH was scary. It made me think that the real killer got away with it once. Who's to say, who's to say they wouldn't do it again? Uh, absolutely. Who knows if they just didn't move out of the area and, and start up somewhere else, set up shop somewhere else and... Panties, vibrators, and flowers. What a mess that place is. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 crazy what they were taking out of her her, her room and stuff. It's pretty pretty wild. This case is, the case is the most elaborate game of Clue ever. Yeah. <laughs> were the scratches and bruises on Ryan Hillegas's hands ever questioned? Not by anybody except us. Internet sleuthers. So far that I've noticed. One thing I noted was that Wiegert and Fassbender told Barb not to come into the interrogation room with Brendan due to the horrific details he'd be sharing. Yeah, 
Well, not and not only that, not to mention the fact that they decided to do this little interrogation with Brendan on March 1st, which was a day that, that Barb was actually in divorce court all day until 2 o'clock. And then at 2 o'clock, she could leave that. She was done in court and was able to go over to the police station, by which time it was it was all over. What about the ball game last night? Oh, yeah, he reminded me of that. Yeah, unfortunately, it's really a crappy uh, era to be a Dodger fan because I don't know if you guys remember the World Series last year, but, man, the Dodgers made some pitching decisions in that series that that had us fans just pulling our hair out. And, and, and when we lost to Houston, we were mad. And now we're having a repeat of that situation this year. I have no idea what the Dodgers were thinking when they pulled out Rich Hill, who was in the midst of throwing a one-hit shutout uh, and, and was shutting down a team that has been notorious all year for its offense. But it just so turned out that Rich Hill had what had the right stuff because the one type of pitching that Boston had trouble with all year was left-handers with really, really crazy breaking stuff, which is exactly what Rich Hill had. So why they took Rich Hill out when he was in the middle of pitching a one-hitter, uh, a one-hitter shutout when he was up by four runs, I'll never understand. I'll never understand. So the Dodgers basically made just the stupidest possible decision they could possibly make I think I don't know and um, that's what happened I mean they had all the momentum in their favor up until they did that and then I don't know and I still to this I don't understand why some people are making excuses you know about it or whatever but I don't see any excuse for it I don't see any excuse for what he did and and personally in my in my mind you don't you don't stop a pitcher who's throwing a one hit shutout Especially if he hasn't shown any signs of weakness. So that's what happened. We lost. Uh, congratulations to the Boston fans. You guys are sitting pretty. You're up 3-1. Most likely are going to win this series. I'll grant it. Dodgers will probably pull this one out tonight. And it'll probably get sent back to Boston. Uh, so that, you know, most likely Boston will be popping the corks over there. Um, unless something miraculous happens. Unless something miraculous happens and the Dodgers are able to pull out two wins in Boston, it'll be amazing. But uh, if and if that happens, that will be truly amazing. It'll be truly a great time to be a Dodger fan. But I cannot tell you how frustrated I am with the coaching and the decision making with the pitching at the Dodgers organization right now is just really frustrating and pissing me the hell off. All right, I'm done talking about baseball now. It looks like everybody still was talking about MEM anyway. <laughs> Tom Hughes, you're an Astros fan? Well, yeah, and you won, though. I mean, right? You won. You won because instead of us pitching a good pitcher in Game 7, we pitched a guy that got lit up by the Astros in the, in the first game he pitched. I, I don't. That series, I was just sitting there going, why did they put him? Why, not, why didn't they put in the guy that, that just shut them down and held them to one run? And, and 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 so that was in the Houston series last year and I was just like oh my god but yeah you guys you guys keep winning because my team has just horrible decision making when it comes to making pitching choices so all right now I'm done talking about baseball <laughs> yeah it's creepy seven pairs of panties it's really strange what they were choosing to collect Detroit Tigers <laughs> So why didn't they clear all the other suspects if it was so clearly SA and BD? Um, yeah, why not? But I, I, I honestly, my opinion is they were afraid to go down any road that could have led towards another suspect. They were afraid to even take two steps down any of those roads because then they might have found something that could have completely blown their case against Avery. That's truly my opinion of why so many avenue, uh, avenues of investigation were left untouched. <coughs> uh, 
at the very least, he delivered a square key. Super Chat is active. Okay. <laughs> um, just bugs me that someone from Teresa's family played their part in the framing of Stephen Avery. Or, or yeah, or at least didn't care that the police were, were having to fudge the evidence a little. Uh, certainly. I think Pam was trying to push her... Push here, divine in, in invest, investing services, <laughs> investigating services. You mean, yeah. Uh, God sent her to the car, right? I am a firm believer it was the ex-boyfriend. Uh, a lot of people believe Ryan Hillegas is the guy. That's, uh, yeah, that's absolutely very common. And hell, there's plenty of reason to believe that. There's plenty of stuff there to make him look fishy. Um. Yeah, Pam is definitely out. Check out body language vids, vid on vids on her guys. They're on, they're good ones. Yeah, they there are some other people out there doing that did some really cool like um, I forget what's the what's the one I think there's one called the Wire or the something that does like these really cool like uh, like facial uh, like micro expression analyzation of like Ryan Hillegas and Pam and and stuff like that and it's interesting stuff. Um, I think it's called The Wire or something. I'll have to maybe look for it, and I'll tell you guys about it in a, in a, in a later video. Super Chat? Yeah. Yes, it sends it's it sends money to me. You're, that's apparently what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so it, it's like it goes to YouTube, and then I imagine YouTube takes like 1 or 2 or, you know, 5% of, of it. And then, and then the rest of it comes to me through uh, Google Payments. So it, that's at least that's what I understand because I've only I'm new to this and it's only been a week. But my friend Johnny explained to me that that's the way that it's supposed to work. The issue with Pam is that it was like a, and she lied about that Maggie also Al Fallon I will say that it looks like when I look at my analytics recently it looks like that 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 super chat stuff is showing up in the analytics just if you're curious <laughs> BD and ST going hunting on the same time in opposite directions coincidental it is odd right it seems well, at least it seems odd I mean you know I don't know when Ryan H. smiles, my soul shivers. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. That's good. Have you seen the videos about the voices in the background on the plates? Uh, yes, that's my friend Johnny's video. Um, it's Ripper Ripper YouTube uh, NBA NBA 4K uh, is his name now. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 uh, it's the call that Colbert makes, and you can hear. I actually left it in either the last video or the video before. I left the link in the video in the information below. Um, yeah, Mike, I saw that. That's mental, right? Sounds like just like her, right? Absolutely. Um, saying the car's here, you know, it's it's as soon as the dispatcher says, "Oh, it comes back to a uh, Teresa Halbach," and then you hear the car's here, and it's like I mean immediate. It's like oh wow. Yeah, Ryan is a nurse. What about George Zipper, a dog, and you know, a lot of people thought that possibly George Zipper's dog had maybe t had attacked Teresa while she was there to take to attempt to take a picture, um, and that you know Mr. Zipper had maybe panicked and decided to just finish her off, and you know so there was some theory that went along those lines. Um, that's that would that's why the Zipper dog would have been a. Um, something to consider but it really looks like the zippers weren't involved at this point but that could always change I suppose depending on what KZ finds in her investigations uh, give us a run at what you thought ha give us a run of what you thought happened please well I really think that Teresa got there to the salvage yard I really believe Teresa left I really believe she was out on the road, um, and something happened when she was out on the road. Some people believe she was pulled over, 
on the side of the road and taking a picture of a cow. She really loved photography. She really, truly did love photography. And and so there's, there's more than a few accounts of people that, uh, that believe they saw a girl, um, the fitting Teresa's description with the vehicle fitting the RAV4's description, and they saw her taking a picture of a cow. So could have been she was taking a picture of a cow and somebody came up behind her uh, possibly Bobby since that's Zellner's current theory um, so but anyways I think she left the, the salvage yard because Zellner is, it was, Zellner is sure that the cell tower pings are showing that she left the, the cell tower pings show her get further away from the salvage yard and then and then comes around back by the cuss road way and and so yeah so that's that's kind of currently what, what what is thought happened and and what is currently what is currently being put out there is the fact that Bobby was home, and 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 it's it's at this point not disputable, indisputable, that he left pretty much right after Teresa. He left pretty much right at that time. So I don't know, just a little strange uh, that he would have left at exactly that time. I watched the second season and was so irritated when Zellner followed evidence back to Bobby and it's sad that the evidence leads there um, but that computer has damning it. The, yeah, what's on that computer is extremely alarming, extremely concerning um, and, and there is no denying that. Vet called before the investigation. Ooh. Oh, I don't know why Uyghur would have called for a vet. That's strange. Anyway, uh, if it makes you feel better, the case, if this case was in Boston, we wouldn't be Hannah this chat right now. <laughs> Here, Kose, have you watched any of the Juan Tesker videos on this case? I have. I've watched Juan's. I've watched Juan's videos. All of them. I get notifications when he puts one out. Problem is, guy, he doesn't put him out anymore. But man, you guys should have been there when he first started. Oh, we were all waiting for the, you know, he put out part one, and we were all just like, oh my gosh, yes, this, you know, got us thinking about the case all in a kind of a different way. We all loved one, um, and he put out his first ten parts, and they all came out like like pretty close together. And then, dude, it was like. It was like two months, and then he put out another one. And then it was another two months, and he put out another one. And then it was like a year, and then he just put out another one recently. Um, but, yeah, I know I know Juan's videos. Very informative, very interesting. It's recorded. They ask for a vet. If it makes you feel any better, if this case is in Boston. Uh, okay. The coroner being stopped in the middle of her testimony is huge. Yeah, that was, you know... It just shows Willis was was not keen to let any of this uh, investigational bias show, even though they were running a planting defense. Isn't in the Avery land valuable? Yeah, there are some people that believe that, that they might have been trying to run the Averys off. There was a, a school of thought about that. Um, why, why you no answer my question? Would have loved to hear your opinion. Um, anyways, love the channel. I'm going to say something again. James Gallagher. All right. Hold on there, James. See, I get to talking, James Gallagher, and I sometimes have to... I just have to kind of skip some parts of the chat, unfortunately. And uh, I must have just missed yours. So I'm scrolling up here. Hold on. James Gallagher, where are you at? Jeez, how long ago did you make it, James? Are you sure? Are you sure you hit send on it, James? <laughs> Hold on, let me keep looking here. Okay, so I see these two, James. Okay, let me look for an orange J.
Well, to be fair, James, I didn't I didn't answer your question be, or your comment because it's not here. I literally only see the one where you're asking me why I didn't answer, but I've I've scrolled up and there's nothing there. So, um, sorry, bud. If you want to ask it again, I'll be more than happy to give you an answer to it, but there's just nothing up there to look at. TH the birth certificate was interesting. Uh, he asked what your theory was. Oh, I was talking about the timeline. Somebody asked about a timeline. I was giving that. Um, anyway. Hey, I'll catch up later. Okay, you have a good night, Lori. Uh, he said he was logging out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he answered his theory. I, I thought I was answering that too. So, okay. So, that's what he was talking about? Okay. Well, I guess I, I was answering that. So, um, his question with disappearing ink. Yeah. Juan seemed scared on part 11 or 12, stating he had precautions. Well, he's actually, a, he's, he's actually in the government there in Wisconsin. He actually works in the government somewhere. And, and, and so, yeah, he's afraid to be himself on the YouTube videos because he doesn't he doesn't want to catch any uh, trouble in his personal life politically. Tim Halbach is and was a lawyer in Chilton during the trial, a court commissioner for Calumet County. Mike works for the Green uh, for the Green Bay Packers. Yes, he does. Uh, Vicky Hall was also worked for Calumet County. Yeah. Checking something out here. Hold on. Willis screwed Avery several times during the trial. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a couple of the big ones is not seeing the relevance in the deleted voicemails. That's a huge problem for me. Um, and and then not seeing the relevance of the coroner being barred from the crime scene. That's another one. It's just obviously Willis was biased. You couldn't find Juan Tesker? That's the way... Yeah, that's right, Tara. That's the way it's spelled. Um, yeah, I don't know. You should be able to find it that way, but I can I can find one after I'm done here and, and maybe leave a link. Is it true that Teresa was involved with a married man? If so, why was hasn't he been questioned? So, Brad Sheck is the guy's name. Yes, it happened. It started out, she f photographed Brad Sheck and his wife doing some boudoir photos, basically. And then eventually, Teresa got into a relationship with Brad where they, you know, hooked up, I guess, a couple times or whatever. And but eventually, Teresa broke that. She was getting over that and was breaking that off. And um, But certainly, Brad's wife could have had considerably, you know, could have been quite pissed at Teresa, certainly. I heard that too. I've been, I've seen Juan's videos. They're all like words on the black screen. Exactly. He has text up on the screen and he just talks the whole time uh, with a voiceover. Exactly. It might be with lowercase t and a lowercase j. That might be it. I believe Zellner nailed the damage to the car because it was pushed. Yeah. I am not going to be able to contain my anger at the system if Dassey and Avery don't get dismissal of the murder charges. Yeah, it's going to maybe take a little time, but I think it'll happen. Ericose, have you thought about doing a partial call-in show during the live feed? Could help with some structure and take your show. Yeah, actually I have. After doing Info Warlock's video the other day, um, I'm considering it. Um, 
But I'm going to have to pick up some kind of a throwaway phone, burner phone of some sort that I don't really care about. And then, um, cause I'm not interested in handing out a number that I use in my daily life, uh, here on YouTube. So I have to overcome that little hurdle and then I can certainly do that. Did you look into the, the Hallbach Dassey connection I sent you on Twitter? I think, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Weeb. Let's see, Juan Tescru. He has he has his icon on the word truth. Uh, maybe. Uh, oh yeah, it's Tescru. Yeah, just it's Juan Tescru, right? It's yeah, tongue in cheek, of course. You know, ha ha ha. So, uh, I like that idea, Jay. Should we? Okay, don't do it. Keeps contacting you. <laughs> yes, you throw away a phone. Yes, use a throwaway phone. Um, it's one test for your success. There you go. Great. Awesome. Oh, with no space. That's what it was. Right on. There you go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I just started listening to his stuff again last night. Yeah. So he's great. He does. He's 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 got a pretty you know logical mind. He's got a really strong knowledge of the case. Um, and and the stuff he says makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I've always liked Juan. He's a pretty good guy. I finally finished season two. What did you think of Casey's recreation of Bobby Dassey following Teresa off the property? Uh, I, I think it's interesting. There's actually a fuller video, though, that, that was uploaded to YouTube about two days before MAM2. Um, and it's called Exhibit J and, you know, whatever. And that video uh, it actually shows a more full, a fuller version of that. Someone named Alex Smart commented under a different YouTube video that Mike Halbach used to hang around the junkyard with the Dassey boys when they were younger. I don't know about that. That is, as far as I can tell, completely unconfirmed. Yes, and Bobby's cell phone pings are interesting to impeach his testimony. Yeah. I don't care what people did in the past. I'm going to say that I believe it, it will be Bobby Dassey and the stepdad for the roommate and the or the roommate and the, and the ex-boyfriend. Yeah, those are the two likely options at this point. Hi, hi, Julie. Didn't they say that the bones were burned like in a cremation incinerator? Wouldn't Ryan have access to an incinerator working at a hospital? I don't know. I don't know if, the, if a hospital would have one, but certainly Scott worked at a place, a smelter, um, and he would have had access possibly. Um, I think the Zellner recreation was far-fetched. I think I think the acting was bad. And, uh, well, you know, I think the people participating in it weren't actors, but I think it was kind of showing critical placement, like placement of where where people had to be. Um, I think is what's interesting about it. Oh no, most nurses don't have access to an incinerator in my field. Oh, okay. Yeah, the video's on YouTube. It's, yeah. Like I said, in terms of representing where the logistics of how things happen, it's good. The people in it weren't the best actors. They're, they, they, it, yeah, it doesn't come off really very well as a flow. And, and it could, and it, and it could be that it needs to be retooled when more evidence comes out. But at this point in time, it, it it's, it at least shows representations of the logistics of where everybody would be. Type in Exhibit J. Um, why was Scott's trailer destroyed? Uh, yeah, that's another good question. Something my friend G always likes to bring up. Why was Bobby's truck crushed? Yeah, that's another thing. When I saw that in Zellner's live Q&A the other day, and I saw that it had been crushed, I asked the same question. I'm like, oh, really? I wonder why that happened. I didn't know that. That was actually a little bit of a surprise to me. I'm assuming KZ would have investigated Scott's job and asked questions about the sick key letter. Yeah, she doesn't seem too overly worried about the sick key letter for some reason. But So we'll have to see how, how or what comes of that. 
the evidentiary hearings get set for sometime next year, I may have to buy a plane ticket. Yeah, my friend, my friend Paul Capaldi, my friend Mark Hodnot, and I are thinking something similar. I had a lot of fun when I went to Wisconsin the first time. It was really fun. I wish I would have stayed a little bit longer, actually. It was, it was pretty fun. Oh, thank you very much, Elf Allen. Thank you very much. You're very kind. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll, I'll have a beer right now. See, if you work in the OR, you'd especially have access to the incinerator where, that, where they do that work exactly. Oh, okay, yeah, that, I guess that would make sense if you're an OR nurse, you mean? Thank you very much, Elf Fallon. You're very kind, man. <laughs> Hello, Jerome from Belgium. Hold on, let me get my... Stella open here. <laughs> Let's see. The Sikiki key, key letter was created by Manitowoc to give them all an out since they knew they were caught. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's... I mean, I can see some... What you're, where you're going with that. We support your work. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jerome. <laughs> Yet, if the murder was committed by Bobby and stepdad, a roommate, and an ex-boyfriend, the twist is how do the Manitowoc sheriffs fit into fit into how it was done timing-wise, and how do they pull it off? That's that's just it. I mean, it, that's why Zellner has her current theory of how and who planted what and when. And and so that things click together, because because Zellner's theory right now has clicked together very well, far better than the than the prosecution's narrative ever did. Um, nurse is interesting, but, ner but Ryan was unemployed at the time. He was. I don't know if he was unemployed, but I think he was just starting to, a job as a nurse or something. Um, you made great work. Oh, thank you, Jerome. <laughs> Uh, Erica, I love your videos. The best on this topic. Thanks for all your comments. Oh, you're so welcome. Chris loves YouTube. I'm happy to be here helping spread the awareness and, and help educate people. And, and uh, you know, so they don't have to listen to the likes of Ken Kratz and possibly buy into all his crap like so many people did after MAM1. I learned a lot of lessons from MAM1. And, and following the last two and a half years, I learned a lot of lessons. And... I will do the best to make sure that I don't watch a bunch of people fall down the same stupid traps that people did after MAM1. So I will continue to do everything I can to prevent that. Um, cheers, Buzz. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the channel. You, d you do have an extensive knowledge of the case and the system. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it just comes from following the case, you know. I mean... Uh, Ever since I was young, going up to school, I always just had an extremely very high vocabulary, like or a very you know vast vocabulary, a high reading comprehension. I was always able to pick things up really, really quick in reading, and I was um, I was always able to. I was very good. My teachers were always very surprised at my ability to discern the definition of words that I didn't know what they meant before I read a, par a paragraph, but after reading the paragraph, I could pretty much write what the definition was very well for the teacher to the point where I impressed a lot of teachers with my ability to do that. It's just something that I, I don't know. I, it's just something that comes naturally to me, but I think some other people think that it's actually kind of cool. But so I just always had that ability of reading comprehension. And I noticed it again when I was in high school, when I like was taking the ASVABs for the, uh, it's like the military battery test or whatever. Um, and it's just, I was in like, I scored a 99 on the, on the reading comprehension on the ASVABs and stuff. Um, so I just had that ability and reading all these court documents and filings from Brendan's lawyers and from KZ and, and I'm learning as I go, but I pick things up pretty quick that I read. So I am getting quite an education 
I am also planning to be back to school here pretty soon. I think I'm going to be going back for the spring semester, as a matter of fact. Um, so that's kind of where I'm, that's what I'm looking at right now. But yeah, I was always able to pick these things up pretty quick and, and always, like I said, had always had a pretty high reading comprehension. Kratz keeps talking about, Kratz keeps talking, but then says he's not involved in the case anymore. I know exactly. He, he can't shut up, but yet wants to, wants to try to separate himself whenever things get unpleasant it's just like when brad schimmel when he gets asked an oscar an, when he gets asked an awkward question by the press brad schimmel's the attorney general of wisconsin if you don't know uh whenever he gets an ask an awkward question about brendan or whatever he immediately evokes the hallbach family and says oh i'm doing what i'm do what i think is best for the hallbach family and la 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 so that he doesn't have to answer awkward questions Kratz keeps talking. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's an interesting idea, Jay. Uh, if I had someone properly, I could... <laughs> right, try is the operative word here. Thus, all hit, all this ammo for Zellner. Right. Oh, thank you, Jerome. Cheers. <laughs> I'm telling you, zippers are related to everyone. Well, everybody in that area is related to everyone. It's very, very strange. I have a friend of mine, Carrie, who has really gone through and put together all the um, genealogical things, and it's just strictly amazing, all the like fam familial connections with that people in that area. It's just because there's just so... It's not a high population of people, so... What's my star sign? Um, I would be a Gemini. Yes, I think Kratz is nervous. I think Kratz is nervous. His case is getting blown apart. Yeah, oh yeah, certainly. Everyone thinks I'm crazy keeping notes, etc. Then I come here and I'm home. <laughs> Good for you, Michelle. Yes, you are home here. Do you know if any of the celebrities are involved? I know Kim Kardashian tweeted that she was watching it. Uh, haven't heard much else yet, but I'm sure in the next month or two we'll start to hear about some celebrities who uh, watch it and 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 will make some comments about it and stuff like that. Oh, it's only those three or none. Okay, then I guess I'm none. Courtney Skinner, I live here. Oh, thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Virgo was your guess? Oh, no. I'm Yeah, I'm a Gemini. Thanks, Maggie. The, lo the local one here in Ohio makes 20 to, 20 to 30 grand over four-day weekends. Okay. Been trying to procure a free copy of Kratz's book. I just don't... I just... Just don't want you to have a... a f <laughs> You're funny, Fallon. I don't understand the Hallbox family, why, why they don't know the truth about her, uh, about her lost. Yeah, well, they're in pain, and and yeah, they're you know they're not they're not really wanting to look. They're not really they're not motivated to to want to see the truth here. They're they're in pain. They know that their loved one is gone, and and so. Gemini wouldn't have guessed that. Hello, Aries here. Well, I'm on the cusp. I'm a bit of a Taurus as well. And uh, that's probably, it's probably, actually probably more of the Taurus traits that have me here, uh, you know, that got me, that got me uppity enough to get onto YouTube and start talking about this, but it's probably more of my Gemini traits that are causing me to be more retrospect about everything, so. <laughs> <coughs> Kratz's book, buy it on Kindle, return within seven days, and get a refund. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Michelle's a Gemini. There we go. I really hate that Kratz has the poor Hallbach family believing his lies. He is so sleazy. Absolutely. It just drives me insane. It, and, and they're not the only ones that buy Kratz's lies. I'm, you know, I have a, other videos about a friend of mine, Carla Garcia, 
and came to me about a podcast that these people were doing and they had bought into King Kratz's lies and so her and I did a video where her she called in her, she called me and I recorded the phone call and and I ended up making up a little video of her and I talking about it and it was kind of like our own little version of a podcast where we talked about the podcast that this other guy and girl had done called Conspired um, about the Avery case and uh, yeah we're we're always looking out for the the next opportunity to refute people that keep buying into the crap that Kratz says I can't believe people still keep buying into it it's just <laughs> mind boggling I'm guessing that they did find Teresa's body was proven otherwise they couldn't charge Steven um, right they needed a body certainly Love Sean Atwood's book and can't wait for Frax. Yeah, Unmaking a Murder was great. Um, and I did reviews on it. I'm actually, he actually mentions me in it. It's funny, I, I, get a I get a message from people occasionally as they're reading Sean's book. I'm reading Sean's book, he mentions you. I'm like, I go, yeah, I go, that was, I go, that was awesome. And, and everything is funny. So I even yeah. had one person sent me a copy of the book so I could sign it for him. So it was funny. So. Uh, I never saw a real emotion from one Hallbach on tape. I don't know. I think I saw what seemed like convincing pain on her mom's face. But Michael seemed like he was just too happy to have all the attention of the cameras. It looked like to me personally. But I don't know. Uh, haha, great. The twins. Um, toe sided, which must mean you weigh up both sides. And also like to talk. <laughs> I weigh up both sides. I mean, that's me. I I certainly do. I mean, I'm. You know, even though I I came, I eventually came to the opinion that I feel the probabilities that Stevens that the probabilities are that Stevens innocent. I didn't start out at that point. I started out on the fence, thinking I really think we need a retrial here because this thing is a mess. Um, but as I started digging into the case documents and stuff, I really started to come to the opinion that, you know, yeah, we need a retrial, but yeah, Stephen was pretty much railroaded. And, and so I am of the opinion now that the probabilities are in favor of Stephen. And I believe Brendan is 100% innocent. I just don't know how anybody, I don't know how, how Wiegert and Fassbender can sleep at night after what they did to Brendan personally. Yes, yes, Patrick. Can we talk about Judge Angela Bias? Yeah, she was she was on the victim rights board with Kratz and Zellner filing substitute judges. Yes, yes, she actually was on the victim rights board with Kratz, and here she is, just like flatly denying all of, all of these motions, and and then in her decisions, in her evaluation of what you know what Zellner had written, she shows that she really didn't fully understand. So, yeah, she, Judge Angela Sukowitz, I was hoping was going to be a straight shooter, but it turns out it looks like she's just not. Tauruses are, are the best, Maggie, you know it. Yeah, that's why I said, like I said, I'm on the cusp of Gemini and Taurus, so I'd have to say it's probably the it's probably the, the, the bull, the stubborn bull in me that got me out here talking on on YouTube and, and starting a Twitter account and and you know well suddenly having a social media footprint for the first time in my life uh, it's probably the it's probably the bull that got me out but but uh, it's probably it's probably more of the the twins that are you know keeping me weighing up both sides and and continuing to want to talk and share my knowledge with everybody else I guarantee Kratz is reading or watching. Whoop, what happened there? Ah, what happened to it? Taurus's patience, no real tears, not even the fake ones. I'm sorry, I'm just, it's just disturbing. I've got my boyfriend onto this case now. Oh, yes, finally someone sees the light. <laughs> Have to go to work tomorrow, so off to bed. Oh, well. We'll see you later, Paula. Obviously, something really strange is going on. I have studied body language, facial expression, micros for uh, six years, and have lots of opinions on that as well. Many things to many things do not add up. 
No friends or family reported her missing. Only Yeah, it, and it took three days for that to happen. Uh, Kratz doesn't care about the victims. He harasses them. Yeah. Let's see. I've watched first... I've watched the first one I don't know how many times in the last couple years. New one is sad to me. Everyone aging so much. Just horrible. Well, yeah. Father Time is brutal, isn't he? It is possible to send support letters to Stephen and Brendan from Belgium. You should be. And and as I said, there's links to Sean Atwood videos in the information down below there. There's links to Sean Atwood videos that tell you exactly what to do. It tells you also exactly what not to do. So if you listen, if you follow the instructions, because Sean Atwood's in the UK, so if you follow his instructions, you will be able to get your mail to Stephen and Brendan. Glad others see it too. It's difficult to mention it publicly and openly through without others thinking you're attacking on the Three Center family. Expressions and body language are very telling. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be very careful what you say about you know Teresa and her family and stuff. You know publicly. Uh, even I also feel that way. I mean, I, I certainly, you know, believe that they are the victim's family. No matter what we think, they are the victim's family. And so there's a certain amount of deference that, that is due to them. So um, I feel that way. I also feel that the same deference is due to Mama and Papa Avery and to Barb. Because I feel Barb, of all in this, I feel like Barb was really the one that was just the most brutally beat up and bullied by the powers that be in this. Um, and has landed her in her current situation. It's hard not to see Maggie, yeah. Uh, hashtag free Brendan, hashtag free Steven, yeah. Uh, yes, Michelle O'Kelly couldn't handle that blue ribbon. Yeah, when he was crying about the, he kept blubbering, blubbering about the blue ribbon, and he couldn't even get himself together, yeah. Because he didn't want to have to answer for the, what he had done to Brendan, that's all. She had to bleed. She had to bleed more, but where... Does anyone know if the bones were tested for Teresa's DNA? Yes, the, the 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 bones. Yes, the FBI took the bones and did a mitochondrial DNA test. We've been talking about this last couple of videos. Um, I have a microbiologist friend that says the suspects of that re that test are very su or the results of that test are very suspect. Um, and hopefully, I'll put together something on that in the near future. What was Stephen talking about when he and Barb were on the phone and said Barb had sex with Brendan? Yeah, that's all just crazy stuff, I think, that was getting stirred up by the investigators, trying to get everybody to suggest that Stephen was molesting and everything, everybody, and like just like they were doing to Jody, and just, I mean, it's, I think that's a result of the investigators and, and their influence on this whole thing. Didn't know Kelly offer the blue ribbon to Brendan at the end. He was, he had one there at the, at the, at the, when he was interviewing Brendan and stuff as, and he, and he was like using as these this is what they put around for for Teresa because then nobody can nobody you know this is cuz they're sad and they can't see her anymore so they're hanging these up and he's like trying to pull at Brendan's heartstrings you know because he absolutely believed Brendan was was guilty and and then goes along and does exactly what every other investigator has done so far and coerced him told him what to say you know and bullied him and yeah could Scott be an undercover I don't know uh, why wasn't there more blood from TH and the Rav? Um, well, like 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 Zellner says, she thinks that she was hit, blunt force trauma, and that the skull was like cracked or whatever. So she was, it's believed she was bleeding, but not maybe super heavy, not like arteries, you know, shooting, um, but bleeding significantly to leave a fair amount of blood in that cargo area. So yeah, it's 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 unclear exactly, but. Oh, I didn't see the Michelle, but it sounds pretty... Okay, I found it odd that there is no mix of blood in the found. Yeah, there should be a mix, right? If Stephen's actively bleeding and he's loading Teresa into the cargo area, there should be a mixture of their blood, right? There's so many disgusting rumors about SA. <laughs> OMG and O'Kelly testifying when he's getting all teary about the ribbon. Uh, bias again. Brendan was their... Brendan was their client. Bastards. Yeah, absolutely. He's... It's, yeah, it's absolutely just unacceptable Scott kind of changed ch changed mind in part two he really seemed genuine and sympathetic for SA and BD um, he did at the beginning but then then Zellner 
got that CD and her theories started to change and things got kind of, you know, that's when things kind of got a little bit buggy. I saw where Teresa had a cousin that was, that's Carmen. Yes, you can, uh, you can find, um, you can find on Twitter, there's, there's a fair amount of people there that, that believe that, that Carmen, uh, it's, that it, that it's actually Carmen's bones in the pit. He was surrounded by the blue ribbon and lots of pictures of Teresa when he was interrogated, uh, by Ho Kelly. Yes. The, he had a bunch of stuff laid out on a table in front of Brendan. Uh, what do you think about Dave Bagaka's story? I think Dave Bagaka is. I think what he what he talks about is is a good old brother network there in in Manitowoc. Um, whatever you know the whatever whatever you know members of it he was encountering that were doing the weird stuff they were doing. You clearly get an, a sense there that there's this this underlying you know network there of of you know. Something, something a little shady, something a little fishy. So I kind of like Dave's videos. I kind of like Dave. He's a pretty nice guy. I've met him. I actually met him in June. He was out at the, uh, he was actually out at the uh, rally. So I got to meet with him and talk to him a little bit there. I talked with him through Messenger quite a bit. In fact, if you guys wanted me to do a video with Dave, um. Him and I have talked about doing that for a long time. So if you guys were interested in seeing Dave and I talk about a few things in a video, we could probably do that. Who knows? I think two people know who killed her and the police really don't. Yeah. Just involved in planning and making a case. Yeah. Did you see the whole taped phone call of Stephen Barb? Yes. Seen that? Um... Yeah, video with Dave. Okay, I'll talk to Dave about it. We'll we'll kind of start putting it together. Don't forget, I'm doing a video tonight with with the Mad Scotsman Paul Capaldi from over there in Scotland, and then Mark Hodnot over in Australia. Related, but I extremely believe that you should watch the Keepers. I have watched the Keepers. I actually I have a video about the Keepers. Go into my videos and search for the keepers. I have a video about the keepers. It's totally corrupt, bigger than the good old boys club. Well, yeah, but but kind of a good old boys club is how I kind of refer to it. Oh, well, I'm going to be uploading it, so it's going to be late cuz it's going to be after midnight Pacific Standard Time, so it's going to be really late. Cuz that's the only way that it would line up where it's it's at ten o'clock, basically right before I go to bed. It's right at six o'clock, when when Mr. Capaldi is waking up in the morning, and then it's like four o'clock p.m. for 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 Mr. Hodnot. So it was like the best time we could pick, where right before I go to bed, right when Paul wakes up, and then right when when Mark Hodnot is getting off work. It's like the perfect time that works out where we're able to hook up and do the video. So. Uh, you should do a video with Dave. Okay, I uh, will talk to Dave about that. The Keepers was interesting for sure. Ah, I love the Keepers, and it was very, very interesting. And I, I just, I, you know, well, I'll, I'll put it this way: I didn't refer to the Catholic Church very kindly in my video. Keeper Doc really bothered me as well. Absolutely. Oh shit! Doing that right after this podcast. <laughs> Another interesting series on Netflix, uh, the confession tapes. Yeah, absolutely. Those those are somewhat interesting. I've only gotten a couple episodes into that because I keep getting distracted into other things. But yeah, um, oh Lord, for us East Coasters, brutal. Yeah, just wait for in the morning because I'm just going to be uploading it. It's not going to be a live video. It's just going to be an upload. Um, it's I'm gonna, which is cool because I'm going to be able to throw in some documents and some video clips for you guys. Uh, that you know me and Mark and Paul will be talking about and because I'm not because I'm not live before I upload it I'll be able to make some cuts and add in some interesting segments in between so it should be a lot of fun for you guys be sure to, to tune in um, it's another showcase of the international support because like I said Mr. Hodnott's from Australia Mr. Capaldi is the mad Scotsman from over there in Scotland and and so 
be sure to, to check it out uh, tomorrow. Um, but like I said, it's just an upload, not a live video, so don't feel obligated to to have to be there right when it happens. It does. You don't. It, only you know when I upload it, it's just an upload, so there's there's no live feed. Resist Kathleen and the prosecutor kept saying Teresa was afraid of Stephen. That's bull. She was not. She was not afraid of Stephen. I have a video I did right before MAM came out, literally a day or two before the 19th, uh, where I addressed that because I figured for sure Kratz was going to be coming out talking about, again, how Teresa was afraid of Stephen and all that crap. Casey had ideas about Brendan's case after the fact, though. It made me sad. Yeah. But it's also, it's not her, she's not making the decisions on Brendan's case. If she comes up with something that can help him and can send it over to his lawyers, that's one thing. But when it comes to deciding on the tactics and the strategies of Brendan's case, that's where she's got to be more hands-off. Oh yeah, these, these series are great. Who do we write? The Supreme Court? In terms of what exactly, A. Woodward... What are you what are you writing about? If you were if you were looking to ask, you know, or if you're looking to showcase the that the world is watching and trying to send something to this to the say maybe the, you know, the the Supreme Court or something, well, I don't know if you want to send anything to judges. It's really not a good idea. We actually had a group of guilters recently that sent some flowers to Judge Sukowitz um, after she denied Stephen, the guilters, one of the guilters got together and sent some flowers to Judge Sukowitz. And it created this kind of crazy hubbub. Judge Sukowitz immediately called the police over and they inspected, made sure it wasn't like a bomb and all these things. Better not to send things to courthouses. But sending things to legislators, um, Particularly, uh, if, if 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 we're if we're trying to highlight the black eye that this is for Wisconsin, then we want to send it to le the Wisconsin legislators. If we want to talk about AEDPA, we need to get that to the U.S. legislators. That means the U.S. senators and the U.S. House of Representatives. We need to we need to bombard those folks uh, with letters talking about how AEDPA needs to be amended and changed, how it should have never ever taken away the habeas rights of Americans, but certainly should not have taken away the habeas rights of juveniles and those who are mentally limited capacities. Um, so that sort of stuff needs to go to the national legislators. So I hope that's a good answer to your question. We need is a retrial and KZ 100% free. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. Over or under FBI is sitting outside Ryan's house watching his moves at the very moment. Uh, I don't know. I'd say they're probably not. They weren't interested then. Why would they be now? I don't know. Love all your videos. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Tony. Uh, they should work together. It benefits all about the Supreme Court hearing this case. Yeah. If you want. Yeah, you could do that potentially. Uh, Wisconsin needs a vote. Yeah, Wisconsin needs a vote. We should we should send deodorant to KK. <laughs> What's wasn't there one that helped keep you dry? You got to send that one. Whatever the one that that used to make the claims that it, that it helped keep you dry, you got to send them that one. Uh, lifetime supply. Yeah. Did they ever figure out who was calling Teresa's cell phone and bugging? I they no not as far as I can tell they never have. Thank you so much. We we need to tell people we. We need to tell people we come in contact with to write legislation. Yeah, and to write their legislators. Absolutely. Do you know why nobody speaks about the dogs tracking during the, the, the trials? They do. I, I actually, for one of my videos when I was talking about cadaver dog Brutus and stuff over by the trailer, I actually took the dog handler's testimony from the trial to, to illustrate my point. So it, it, it is in there. Not a lot maybe or not enough, but... Air it extra dry. I think that is it. Sure for men. So it's not pH balanced for a woman. <laughs> if Pierce could come up with the dates, could they find the harasser, though? TH's phone records. Um, I would think it's possible. I don't know. Maybe Zellner has, and maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. I don't know. Uh, but I, I still... Whoever that would have been just concerns me. Whoever it would have been, that would have been a person with real intent to do something 
to Teresa, whether it was, um, whether it was, whether it started out as intent to murder is one thing, but, but I think it ended that way. Is that a monkey on your sofa? It's cute. Yes, that's a little monkey. I put him there. I put him there when I record because he's my good luck charm. <laughs> Here, let's 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 bring him in for a close up. There he is. Hello, folks. Watch Eric Cozy on making a murderer. No. Anyway. <laughs> I live in Wisconsin about an hour away from Manitowoc. Cool. All right. it's nice to meet you, Eric. Yeah, I agree. The harasser should be suspect. Absolutely. Uh, I love monkeys. Oh, cool, Jerome. Why wasn't, uh, why wasn't Brendan covered under a juvenile law of some sort? Well, he kind of, there was... That's the weird thing, and why why the new juvenile act that had just been written didn't fully apply to him. Only way it, the only thing that the juvenile act did do for him was got his investigate or that got his interrogation recorded. Fortunately, we at least have that. Hello, monkey. <laughs> Greetings from northern Sweden. Love your video. Oh, well, nice nice to see you, uh, Geekquid. Geek Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Geekquid. Gked, um, sorry if I'm saying that wrong though. Uh, I read somewhere the dog went right in the trailer and hand, and then hand it, and the handler was called away. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Sorry, such a shame. I would write to the president, not to the. Okay, I don't know if the president will help, but I don't know how much that would help. Uh, it's the legislators that have to change the law. The president is not. He doesn't have the ability to just make a piece of legislation happen. You gotta, we gotta, we got. You have to convince the legislators to do it. But maybe, maybe contacting the president helps. Why were so many vital pieces of the inf of info evidence agreed to by String? Yeah, there were some things. I mean, Dean and String, you get the feeling they were overwhelmed and maybe didn't get to fully come to grips with all of the discovery that they were given. To be perfectly honest. Your remind, your monkey reminds me of Lynn Kaczynski, but it's cute. Uh, but yeah, well, at least it's at least it doesn't meow. Yes, they tried Brendan as an adult. Yep. Kid gets out. Kid gets out at 21 a lot, but not, but not him. Makes me so sad. Yeah. Hi Sweden. Hello from. <laughs> Pronounced geeked. Okay, got it. Geeked. All right. <laughs> um, that that Judge Flowers need needs her head examined right after Kratz and J yeah right. President said they can't do anything really because it's state. Exactly. Prez can pardon a federal crime. It's not a federal crime though, unfortunately. Uh, geeked. I thought maybe it was GQ'd. Yeah, I was thinking it was a couple different things possibly, but now we know. Sorry, I know I mentioned Lynn Kaczynski, Lynn Kaczynski, uh, and cute in the same sentence. Never thought. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, Maggie. Um, okay, gotcha. Not the president, the governor can pardon. Okay. Murder, not federal. Yeah, murder is a state thing. So, uh, are you getting married? It's very strong. That beer you're drinking. It's very, oh, am I getting married? Uh, I don't know. Lots of people, lots of people say I'm a merry kind of guy and they love my laugh, so. If only half the beer made me, made me that way, I'm, I'd be out to be worried about being a lightweight, though. Yikes. There's no way Casey hasn't found out who was harassing. Yeah, I'm sure she's probably looked into it. What's rumor about the RAV4 being being buried under? They're, they're just saying, I don't know if it's buried or if it's in an underground parking structure, but it's, uh, from what I understand, it's underground somewhere. Uh, what's the rumor? Okay. 
Lynn disgusts me the most. Yeah. Can you say hi to my wife? Hi, Joel. How are you? <laughs> Just need to get Brendan to say they drove TH to Illinois to kill her, then drove her back. Boom, federal crime. <laughs> I suppose there we go then the actual federal courts could do something about it without being bound by AEDPA but uh, anyway what is it Stella yeah it's Stella I'm drinking Stella uh, it's held as evidence but why underground I, I don't I think it's just a, the facility might just be an underground facility for some reason wherever it's at I don't I'm not really sure I'll click I'll clink your bottle to my wine glass and this drives us okay here we go ready whoops sorry ready here we go clink <laughs> uh, let's see Eric Jose is there any truth to Bobby Dassey been arrested I don't know I don't believe he's been arrested uh, there are reports that he disappeared but I believe he probably just got away from everything because he was getting so much hate on social media and and he 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 may have just kind of gotten away from it all uh, because it's just way too much. Did the trucker who saw the RAV4 say if the light was out or not? I don't believe he did. I think that if, if, if he had Zellner the first time, he wouldn't have been convicted. Oh, yeah, if he had had Zellner from the beginning, but she doesn't do... She only does the wrongful convictions, so it would have been it would have been very tough to pick Zellner up uh, the first time. Casey knows who did it. But she is keeping it secret. Possibly. It's a nickname from an American TV series, so you should know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, it was just the the spelling of it had me a little bit off, uh, had me a little bit kind of confused, but yeah, geeked. That works for me. That that it's a very very interesting way of spelling geeked. Uh, I think it's cool. I think it's way cool. So uh, you should not have heard. It. Anyway, did Scott Taddick buy the property where the Rav4? Apparently, he ended up buying property that was 0.2 miles away and on the opposite side of the road. Bobby most likely in protective custody. Could be. Could be protective custody. Reed Zeller's Denny motion. Where are these arrest rumors coming from? Some people be think that because Bobby... there's First of all, there's rumors going around that Bobby has disappeared. I think those rumors have now led to people reasoning maybe he disappeared because he was arrested and we just don't know it yet. I think that's where that's... I think it's rumor mill stuff. Uh, at this point in time, I don't have... I haven't seen anything definitive to back, to back any of that up. So I, I think it might just be rumor mill stuff at this time. Uh, isn't it a crime in itself? Yeah, it is. To have that kind of stuff on your PC is some of it was it was a crime to have. I think Bobby just went MIA on social media and strange. Yeah, exactly. Watched Doug's parts one through three. Are you the club? He is tortured by this case. Yeah, he he truly is. He's he's been following it since way back when. I mean, he's been following since Stephen's 1985 case because. He felt that Stephen wasn't wasn't guilty of that, and then it ended up turning out that Stephen was exonerated, and then soon after that, he saw this stuff happening to Stephen. So he's kind of just been along the, on the, for the ride the whole time, and that's why I I really like Dave. He's just been there all along. Am I wrong? Brian said he saw Bobby driving. Uh, no, it was Blaine. Blaine. It was Blaine that issued an affidavit that said he saw. Bobby driving a blue green car. Dean and Jerry were working for the prosecution. Eh, well, some people are reasoning that way. Uh, especially if it's child porn, absolutely. Uh, gonna watch that, L. Fallon. If Bobby did this and allowed little bro to go down for it, wow, that would be pretty messed up, I agree. Yes, it's illegal. To have child porn on anything, absolutely. 
when did Scott buy the property? It was, um, I don't know. I think it was like six months or a year after. Not sure exactly. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but none of them thought he was guilty. Uh, OMG, if it was Bobby that was driving the RAV4 when Scott saw him on the road when he was going hunting. It must be so crazy for Ken to watch his sneakiness be bagged by KZ. <laughs> Poor guy would ha uh, sorry would have to decide which stepson to put in jail. Right. Well, I guess. Yeah. I think Bobby's. I think Bobby's evil. As of now, don't think of don't don't think it was him. Uh, all on all on Ryan Hillegas. Okay. A lot of people see. Like I said, Ryan Hillegas is a popular suspect. He's, there's so much there's so much there to suspect him oops Dave not Doug yeah I knew who you were talking about buddy <laughs> cheers there Fallon I don't think Steven ever saw him it's possible that Fastbender planted all of those searches and downloads on the Dassey computer after he recovered items from it some people are reasoning that way now it's not a favorite theory of mine, but it's some people are reasoning that way, and I will certainly always monitor um, any possibility, of course. Does anyone else think the brother was a bit shifty? Um, yeah, Michael, we were talking about one of the videos. We were talking earlier about one of the videos where Mike is like, Ryan's getting asked a question by the press, and Mike is like kind of popping his head out from behind Ryan's head um, and stuff, and you can see him on camera, and he's like staring right daggers at Ryan and stuff. Very strange. Uh, Ryan is the kind is is it kind of like a Michael Myers? <laughs> uh, makes you wonder why Scott and Bobby had each other's backs. That's yeah, that was very strange. Considering they especially considering they didn't really know each other very well at the time. So, yeah. Makes you wonder why Scott and Bobby uh, yeah. Then RH acted acted like found car and led the bone discovery uh, I don't know if he led the bone discovery um, whew, lots of messages coming in Scott Taddock have a job just asking since they said I believe he has a job now I'm not sure what it is uh, why didn't the, the county release the broken RAV4 light to KZ because they're worried I think when it comes down to it Police probably. I'm. In fact, I know they're worried because they were about to ready to start dealing with KZ when they thought that Judge Sukowitz was going to grant a hearing. Now that they know that there may not be a hearing granted, now they're like wanting to hold everything back in again, and you know they've completely retreated. And so yeah, they're 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 looking guilty and shifty as hell. I think Bobby killed TH, called Scott, to help him. Yeah, a lot of people believe that. Uh, nice man just tortured by the entire environment there right did you find it strange that Teresa made a guest appearance in MAM2 the DNA assistant on the hood latch oh right yeah <laughs> does anybody know if it was if it's true that Scott got a call from a teenager Bobby and quickly left work yeah that's that's something I have heard uh, okay hashtag Teresa lives yeah there's a lot of people that believe that now, well, you know, I'm gonna leave that for my video with Paul and uh, with Paul and uh, Mark tonight. Murder of Teresa may become that. Right now, it's not, but it may become that. And it's gonna see. We're gonna have to see what the prosecution does and if they're gonna be able to try to pursue any li any uh, litigation uh, in terms of what Kathleen Zellner turns up. Yes, uh, Scott worked at and may still work at a metal smelting factory. Got to be careful seeing TH lives. If not, I, I personally don't believe it. I but I allow those folks who do believe it to to speak their mind on my channel. Um, but yeah, it's personally not my favorite theory. It's not something. But I will. I I have to be honest though. I have to be perfectly honest, and that is that. The state, in the way that they investigated, and the fishiness around the death certificate, that they left the door open for people to say this. So, I sure as heck hope 
that the state never starts crying foul over this. The family, I can understand crying foul, but the state better not cry foul over it because they made such a pig's ear of this investigation. And there is suspect things about that death certificate. And, yeah. So, I, I really am sick of hearing the state calling foul in this case. They, they, they committed so many fouls. I'm just, I'm tired of it. I don't care what I don't care what fouls they think that they've been fouled because they have hurt many families in this by doing a poor job. What caused the case to reopen specifically when Zellner filed her motion for post conviction relief, her first one? Yeah. Basically about a month and a half later they they reopened the Hallbach investigation. Most likely because they were worried by what they read in Zellner's petition for post-conviction relief. Ah. That was good. You're right. Definitely weird things. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, I'm out. Thanks for another great feed. Yeah. I think that's about it for today, folks. Uh, we have gone for, oh, wow, two hours. We had a two-hour live chat today. I love it. I love talking to all you guys. Mr. Mr. Monkey thinks you guys are all absolutely fantastic as well. Um, so, but I, I, yeah, it's absolutely a blast for me to come in here and talk with you guys. Remember, be sure to to to, to look in about probably about eight to ten hours uh, to look for an upload from me, and I will be uploading a video of me and Mark and Scott, three continents, one video, um, showcasing the international support for Stephen and Brendan. So make sure that you guys look for that, and, and, and don't forget to look for that. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be featuring some cool stuff in there because it's going to be an upload. I'm going to be able to throw in some documents, some video clips, and some really cool stuff for you guys that you might not have known. Uh, particularly, well, I don't want to give you any spoilers just yet. You guys will love it. If you haven't, if for those of you who haven't been like like really uh, investigating for the last two and a half years. Um, there's going to be something in there tonight that I think you might find very, very interesting. So that is about it for today, folks. Thank you, everybody. Saying peace out and bye-bye. I love all you guys. You guys are all very great. Um, and we'll see you guys next time for sure. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe.